Hi Booktube and welcome to a new video. This is the mid-year freakout tag. It is technically a tag uh, but it's really sort of a chance to you know halfway through the year to review your first six months of reading. So uh, it's so known to all booktubers. Um, as I say it is a tag but I don't regard it as a tag. I've done it for the last three years. Uh, there are some questions um, but I, I find it sort of more it's excuse just to sort of review the year in terms of stats and everything. Uh, so although we're uh, June the 25th with technically five more days to go to the end of the month, I don't think I'm going to finish any more books because the only book I've got on the tracks at the moment is My Mammoth for June and I may finish it by the 30th uh, or it might just go into July. So uh, I've read a nice round number 60 uh, in these first six months of the year, which I'm surprised at because having read five stroke six mammoths, I thought that would really bite into my uh, my total number of books for the year. But you know, at this pace, that would be 120, which is you know pretty much what I've done for the last two years. So uh, yeah, so 60 books read in all, of which five were non-fiction and 55 were fiction. And of those 55 fiction, 46 were novels or novellas, six were poetry. One was a graphic novel, two were short story collections, and uh, two were rereads for me. Uh, of the 55 uh, uh, fiction books, 32 were written by men, 21 by women, and one self-identifying as they. And uh, there were seven books by LGBTQ plus uh, authors, and eight books by uh, uh, POC authors or um, First Nation authors. And in terms of the Goodreads ratings, uh, 23 of the uh, 60 books were 5 stars, 24 were 4 stars, 11 were 3 stars and 2 were 2 stars and there were no 1 star reads. So that means of the, 50, of the 60 books I read, 47 were 4 or 5 stars. So I've had a really strong start to 2021 in terms of reading and in, in terms of geography uh, twen again this only relates to fiction 21 were from the UK 14 were from the US 19 were from the rest of the world of which 13 were books in translation and the split of um, rest of the world authors four from Italy three from Chile three from Canada uh, two from France, and then one from Germany, the Czech Republic, Croatia, Ireland, Denmark, Australia and South Africa. So those are the stats, and on to the prompt. So the best book you've read so far, well that is Nervous System by Lina Moran. Moran, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, Lina Meruan, uh, a Chilean writer of, um, of Palestinian descent. I will post the full review uh, video where I talk about this, but it was if there's a could be a better designed Mark Nash book than this, uh, I you know I would struggle to imagine what it would be. Um, it's almost up there with the Lost Children Archive, which those of you who are familiar with me know that is sort of my my sort of benchmark of of good standard novel writing. Um, okay. Uh, best sequel you've read so far? I haven't read any sequels, uh, but I have read five books by the same author. Now, normally, uh, if I read an author for the first time and I like them, uh, I hold off till the next year reading something else by them. I, I don't know why that is, it's just that I've always felt. Uh, I made an exception this year. Leonardo Shasha, an Italian writer from the 1970s, writing about 1970s Italy, and what a fascinating place that was, almost a failed state I'd say. Um, so here I've read five books of his, pretty much one after the other. I've just got a couple more of his titles to go. Three of these are fiction and one is non-fiction and I've got a, he wrote a, a historical novel, um, not historical fiction but a historical novel uh, called The Council of, of Egypt uh, which I, which was the first of his I read actually. Um, so The Day of the Owl which is fiction, The Morrow Affair which is non-fiction, uh, Equal Danger and The Night and Death in one way or another and these are detective genre I suppose but they're you know they're much they're, they're not about the genre work they're about 
uh, almost sort of metaphysical uh, meditations on the state of Italy through crimes and their solving or non-solving. Sometimes the detectives do not make it through the book, they, they die. It's just superb stuff. Um, so technically they're not sequels, none of the characters are carried over. He doesn't have the same detective in any of them, but um, that's the closest I've got to sequels. Three, new release you haven't read yet but want to. I, I don't really have one where I sort of burning need to read. I have got a new release that came out a couple of months ago, um, but the mere fact I haven't already jumped all over it to read it suggests that, you know, as I say, it's not a burning need. But anyway, it's Trent Dalton's All Our Shimmering Skies. This is the follow-up to his Boy Swallows Universe, which I read last year. He's Australian. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I don't even know when I'm going to get to this. That's how non-pressing it is. Uh, the most anticipated release of the second half of the year. Uh, my own books, uh, Stories We Tell Our Children, which comes out July the 15th. Although I won't be reading it because I've already written it. Although I'll be reading parts of it, I suppose, at events, uh, be they online or in the flesh. Um, five, the biggest disappointment. Well, sad to report, it is this. Civilizations by Laurent Binet, uh, who's previous two uh, books, HHHH and The Seventh Function of Language, I love. I mean, I, they were five-star reads. They were in my top ten reads of their respective years they were published, or that I read them. Really looking forward to this. Now, Binet does sort of delve in recent history. Uh, HHHH was set during the Second World War, and The Seventh Function of Language was set in 1980s France. This goes way back. And it is a sort of alternative speculative history is what happens if the, the last king of the Incas wasn't uh, brought down by uh, the conquistadors, but instead turned the tables and made his way over to mainland Europe and gradually sort of eked out uh, a new empire there. And it's, you know, it's brilliantly, you can tell that a lot of thought and, you know, to come up with these alternative scenarios has gone into it, but I couldn't see to what point what is the point? What what was he trying to say? Um, so I was really disappointed in that, I'm afraid. Um, the biggest surprise, uh, the biggest surprise, I think, is the you know that I discovered this author Shyasha to the extent I wanted to read everything by him immediately. Uh, but a specific book, um, All Night at sorry At Night All Blood Is Black, which won the uh, Man Booker International by David Diop from France. And it was surprising because it's a First World War book, and um, but it's quite unlike any other First World War book. It's it's got a sort of a, a psychopath at the heart of it. He's in the French army, or he's serving with the French army. He is a Senegalese rifleman, and witnesses the death of his best mate, sort of next to him on the battlefield, and then in sort of two, true psychopathic style. Uh, decides he's going to take revenge on the enemy for killing his mate. But it's more than that. It's all about sort of perceptions in war and sort of symbolic things in war. So, for example, the Senegalese riflemen, being that they're black, when they sort of are sent over the top by the French to attack the Germans, the impression they want to give is that they're sort of bloodthirsty savages to put the fear of God into the Germans and sap their morale. But as soon as they return back behind their own lines and they're just, you know, they're, they're expected to behave as normal soldiers. You know, they don't play up to this sort of savage thing. The soul, this guy in Seeking Revenge, he says, no, you know, screw that. I'm going to give them the savage that they, that they anticipate and expect. So it plays around with a lot of ideas of race and, and, and sort of nation and things like that. It was, it, you know, it was much more. And it's a slight book. And, you know, he packs it in into a few number of pages. A really, really pleasant surprise, that. Um, seven, favourite new author. Well, I've obviously talked about Shyasha. Uh, I would also be interested to read other stuff by Lina Meruan. Uh, newest fictional crush. I've never understood this. I don't have a crush on a fictional character. Uh, nine, new favourite character. Uh, I don't have favourite characters either, I'm afraid. Uh, ten, book that made you cry. I don't cry, but the reason I said nervous system... Uh, almost got up to the level of the Lost Children Archive because that the reason or one of the reasons I so value the Lost Children Archive is because the emotional effect it wrought. This didn't quite do that, but but it was on the way for sure. Um, book that made you happy. Oh, 
Uh, that's a good question. A book that made me happy. I'm going to have to come back to that. Twelve. Most beautiful book you've bought this, you've bought so far this year or received. I don't. I, you know, I'm not interested in covers, which is really weird because I have to be interested in covers when it comes to my own books. And I was very lucky that I was able to actually um, pretty much um, come up with a concept for the cover of my book. So, but you know, I personally do not buy books on the basis of their covers. Um, and finally, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? Well, they're my mammoths. So I had 10 mammoths uh, that I wanted to read this year. Some I'd already started previously, others I hadn't. I'm on track for that. I'm going to be having read six by the end of June or the beginning of July. July designated as a month I wasn't going to read one because of my own book coming out. I'd be busy with that. So I have a bit of leeway to complete this first six. Uh, and of those, uh, four of them were books that I hadn't started. They were completely new to me. So uh, the books that I have to complete are the remaining mammoths, all of which as well I have started. So that's Ulysses by James Joyce. Duck's Newbury Port, which I actually held up for this question last year. So not much progress made there. Uh, the Infinite Jest, which could possibly be a buddy read with Xena beating around the books. And not a, um, a mammoth, but a book that I am committed to reading because it's a buddy read with Courtney Ferreto, my first buddy read with her, and I'm really looking forward to it. And that is W.G. Sabald's Austerlitz. And I think Brian Bookish is, is, is coming in on that as well, which would be great. Um, so there you have it. I have to return to a book that made you happy. I'm trying to think if I read any books that made me laugh this year. Yeah, there was one. Hang on a sec. I need to go back and, and look which book made me laugh. OK, so there were there were three books that made me happy in different ways. So the first one, as I suggest, is It Made Me Laugh. And that was um, Percival Everett by Virgil Russell, where uh, Percival Everett is the real life author. But the the conceit of this book is a very postmodern as to kind of who's writing who. But actually, it has a lot of laughs in it. Um, you know, I wouldn't. I can't remember if I gave it four or five stars. I probably gave it four stars. I wouldn't unconditionally recommend it, but I enjoyed it. But then two books that, that made me happy in different ways. One was Nupaming by uh, Lisa Samoake Simpson, which, who is a First Nation uh, Canadian. And it made me happy because it is such a non-Western form of narrative as... as was searched for by uh, Scarlett Thomas in her novel Our Tragic Universe, which is a search for the non-story story. And in a way, that's what Nupaming is, because it comes from such a different culture, being a First Nation Canadian. But it, it just works so brilliantly. I really, really enjoyed that. It's just such a different type of reading experience. And then the other book is uh, Leanne Shapton's book with the impossible title that I can never remember. Again, I'll leave links to my reviews of this which is basically uh, the portrait of a relationship between a man and a woman done entirely through um, pictures of the objects in their, in their house, in their daily lives, their clothes, their record collections, their letters, emails, things, which are putatively uh, in an auction collection. And we, the reader, are invited to view these items. And there is sort of description of them. And it's so ingeniously done how you see the, the, the flow of this relationship through these items. And I think it says some very profound things about relationships, about people in relationships, those who try and change their partners to be like themselves or to like the things that they like and, and all that sort of thing. I, I just think it was ingenious. And again, in a bit, a bit like Nupaming, it made me happy because it was so different and so refreshing. So there you have it. That is my uh, mid-year freak out. Um, as I say, I invite every booktuber to do this. Uh, Till next time. Thanks very much.